All right, so as a few of you guys probably know, PTES Title Update 6 is finally out. And with that, they have revealed the patch notes, which what I heard is pretty huge. I haven't really checked this through myself. I do know some stuff about it though, but I thought I would go through it here in a live com and yeah, share my thoughts and just say what I think. And remember, before we go in here, like I'm gonna give my honest opinion though, but I think we all should remember this is a PTS and this is not the live game. So there's definitely stuff that's gonna be overtuned, like either too buffed or too nerfed. And just for my own interest though, like I'm just interested how many of you guys still are playing Division 2. And if you're not playing Division 2, are you playing any other games? And will you test the, the new title update? Like just put it in the comment section below and it would be interesting to see. But yeah, let's uh, go through this. PvP, Dark Sun Gear Normalization. So player stats will no longer be normalized and agents will receive their full recalibration bonus at, at the end game. Perfect, that was something that I just really, really hated. So uh, with them fixing that, that, that's huge. I'm gonna zoom this in a bit more. <laughs> Players below gear score 500 will still receive a stats boost to allow an easier entry in Dark Zone. Yeah, that's a good way to fix it. Like. If you have 450 or lower than 500 gear score, yeah, everything will be at 500 gear score. But it won't like fuck up your stats like it did before, right? Talents continue to have PvE and PvP versions, that's good. So th this is just uh, all around really good. I guess that's all on the PvP. <laughs> uh, hopefully there's more. Supply drops. Added more variety of types and location of supply drops. Supply drops can now drop in inactive landmarks. That's good. I think uh, something that Dark Zone misses and that it needs more of is events like supply drops, but obviously other stuff. Like you could have PvP events. Like there, there's a lot of ideas where you can go into, but I'm not gonna go into that in that, this video because it's gonna be so long if I would do that. Like it's already already gonna be a long video, right? So supply drops will occasionally drop in Occupy Dark Zone. Black Tusk will make sure to guard a precision drop. Now th that's better than what it is right now. Some more supply drops, cool. Updated Thieves Den. Thieves Den vendor has now set up a proper store and accept these and accept uh, Dark Zone resources. The Thieves Den vendor stock will re rotate regularly. So basically, like another vendor. I hope this vendor have a lot of stuff and that it's. Uh, good stuff but as long as it can have a lot of stuff that should be good enough but i think also dark zone kind of miss uh, rewarding uh, gameplay in terms of loot and stuff i would like to see dark zone having higher rewards and more forced player interaction so change to dark zone matchmaking which should ensure higher populations in all zones in the past, one of our biggest goals with the Dark Zone was for it to always feel like a full seamless experience with open world. This led players, depending on which server they were assigned to, going into empty Dark Zone phases. In episode, two, in episode 2, we now make an effort to place you onto a server that will help you that will help you ensure you are playing in a full zone. The server transfer can happen when players first walk into Dark Zone checkpoint. Perfect, perfect, because so many times in Division 2, server just feel, feels dead. I mean, it happened in Division 1 as well. But there was more player in it, so it was easier to like spot people, right? But with this, it should make Dark Zone way, way better. If this change uh, change works, right? As it says. So that's good. General changes, Dark Zone extractions now have a chance to be ambushed by NPCs. Sure, why not? Hacking a Dark Zone terminal will temporarily highlight Dark Zone resources around you. No. Yeah. Just cool, like uh, quality of life, like just small, like uh, changes, right? Let me have a little drink. I just woke up, so yeah. Added PvP projects in conflict. That, that's that's cool. Daily dark sun project. Okay, that's nice because that will put people into PvP. Like I've been playing Destiny two for a while, right? Even though I'm kind of sick of it now and waiting for Shadow Keep, like a lot of things that Destiny 2 does really good is to force you playing activities that you don't want to do, but it gives you loot. So you do it anyway. So I think having more of those daily things and weekly would be nice. Even having it uh, to force people into PvP. Destiny does it, other games do it, why shouldn't Division do it? 
You don't have to do it though. I mean, you want some good loot or chance for it, then yeah, you can do it. Players cannot choose loadouts from the map voting screen. No, that's good. Loot targeting. Okay, this is one of the, the biggest changes, right? So loot targeting is a new feature introduced with title update 6. When reaching World Tier 5, players will be able to see named zones and main missions. Now have an icon to reflect higher drop chance for a specific item. This allows agents to target farms, specific brands, weapons and mods. Like this is just crazy. I will go and look here if I can find a picture. So this is how it looks. And I think this, this is huge. Like now I can target farm anything. And this will rotate every week. But you can see like uh, Araldi in this area. Sokolov in this area. If you do this main mission, it will drop Hilagard if you... Which is really, really good. And I guess we just gotta read through it here. They already talked about this uh, last state of the game, so we should have some... Okay, they're not saying too much in the patch notes. So, one really good thing with it, it doesn't take away loot, it just adds more loot. And if I remember correctly, it, you, when you farm, it will have a specific... It will have the specific logo, so you can actually see when it drops. Far away, or if it closed, right? So, it's re really, really good change. Actually being able to target target farm stuff, it's really nice. Because if I know that I'm gonna get that all the piece, for example, then yeah, I don't mind farming. But if I know it's way way more RG, then yeah, it's uh, it's definitely not as fun to go for it. So recalibration, they have a new interface. Players are now able to recalibrate stat types over each other. For example, red attributes over defensive. Which I know a lot of people actually don't like, and I've been against this as well. But looking at how much RNG the game have, I think this is fine. And still, if you want to have a god roll piece, for example, probably in a lot of cases, you still want to get... If you're going for a damage build, you still want to have a red one instead of a utility. Let's say the item can roll two or three attributes. Let's say three. And you get... Uh, two red and one uh, yellow and let's say you want to go full glass cannon then of course yeah you're gonna roll the the yellow to to a red right but then you can't min max a red stat so it's still gonna be like to have god roll then you still need it to roll as before because otherwise you're just wasting one stat kind of so I, th I think this is fine it's now possible to recalibrate items that are located in the stash yeah, that's good too my stash is full so that's perfect Brances now have an item available on every slot, mask, backpack, vest, gloves, holster, and knee pads, which is really good. I understand why they did it the way they had. It's really confusing though, especially in the beginning, I remember it myself, but I looked through the spreadsheets, so I understood what pieces can roll what. But for people that don't watch the, the spreadsheet, they probably thought that they could get six pieces of Raldi, like that it would roll on every... Like that you would be able to get it as a mask, for example, which you couldn't. You can only get it on gloves, backpack, holster, right? So, so this change is, is huge. So yeah, that, that's really good. Enemies will no longer drop crafting materials that players is currently capped out on. That's good. If that limits the pool and gives you what you actually need, that's really good then. Deconstructing gear and weapons have a chance to provide polo carbo. That's good. I think that was one of the hardest ones to get. Enemies will now drop higher amounts of crafting materials. Okay, so they're buffing it there. Quite huge as well. 6 through 12. Quite uh, huge as well. From 6 to 12. 4 to 9. So, okay. And uh, named as well. Okay, so then... Okay, they're actually buffing it quite a bit. Increased perks for upgrading material. Just a lot of uh, good stuff here for sure. Not gonna go through everything here. Because the video is gonna be way too long. It's gonna be way too long anyway. So here, something big. Stash, increased stash base by 150. So additional 150 stash base. Would like this to say 500 though, but it's a good start. Now we're going to go into something more interesting. It's balancing changes. And I think this is going to be pretty huge here. So yeah, starting with Alps, the two-piece set bonus is now 10% skill power from five. China Light, three-piece have 20 skill haste down from 30. So that's a nerf. Increased effectiveness. Okay, just like NPCs here. I'm not too interested to like look through this. You skim through it like it's just yeah fixing the NPCs. 
I think we can just skip through that and say, yeah, that was, uh, it's good. Keep fixing the NPCs, okay? And we'll look at the skills, with starting with the Seeker Mine. Increase damage of Explosive Seeker Mine by 20%. Now a please bleed status effect. Which, yeah, that's kind of huge though, right? Let's say you're playing a build, for example, you will, yeah, you put them on bleed status. Which means you could have other items that synergizes with that, that uh, you deal more damage to bleeding targets, for example. And yeah, of course, damage buff as well, so... Increased Cluster Seeker Mine, 30%. Higher in cooldown, but more damage. I think that's fine. Because you can lower that with Skill Haste. Thing is, you can't have uh, super, super, super ins insane strong skills with uh, like a 5 second cooldown. So they need to have a bit higher. And sure, like it's 60, but you can get that down pretty damn low if you spec into it. Turret. Assault turret and sniper turret damage is now affected by damage to elite attribute. That, that's cool. Increased drain on uh, flame turret when firing. This is like really good for, for PVers. Um, I never really used skills that much in Division 2 though. But maybe with this enabled, you can actually do some, some strong stuff. The sniper turret should be pretty strong though, if I remember correctly. Not sure how it is in PvE though, but in PvP it's like one-shotting. I don't know if that's still a thing. Drone, striker drone damage is now affected by damage to elite attribute. Same thing there, that's good. Eagle bearer, how is this with the... Why is this with the skills though? <laughs> okay, eagle bearer, lower eagle bearer damage by 15%. I haven't done the math or I don't have that in front of me, so I don't know how much 15% is gonna change this, but what I heard... It should still be the best uh, AR. So I think that's fine. Maybe it nerfed a bit too much. I mean, as long as it is the best AR in the game, then it's fine. Like, I, I even think like a god roll high-end P4 should be better in some cases versus an eagle bear. But I think that could be the case now. But yeah. New talents. Okay, okay. Pog, pog, pog. Spark. Damaging enemies with skills or grenades grants plus 15 weapon damage for 15 seconds. Okay, on backpacks. Skills or grenades. 15 weapon damage for 15 seconds. That, that's pretty huge. And you only need to damage them, so you can like use some skill that just hits the enemy easy, right? Just to get the 15 damage boost. Vigilance. Gain 25 weapon damage. Receiving damage disables this buff for 5 seconds. I actually saw this on a tweet. This is like perfect for sniper though. Disable the buff for 5 seconds. So it's still like... Uh, it's still... This is definitely going to be interesting. I hope, I really hope for PvP that one-shot snipers will be a thing, right? To the head, of course. Like, I would like to see the time to kill being faster, so one-shot sniper to the head feels okay. And yeah, that would be fun. Concussion. Headshot grants plus 20 headshot damage for 2 seconds. 5 seconds with marksman rifle. Damn, dude. This, 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 dude. Damn. And headshot grants plus 20 headshot damage for 2 seconds, which is super low. But then again, if it's not a sniper, you just, drrr, you just headshot like that with AR and you just get plus 20 headshot damage all day. Damn, I, I love that talent, dude. 5 seconds with marksman rifle. Would like maybe a higher one on, on marksman rifle. Maybe depending on the rate of fire. But yeah, at least, yeah, I, that, that's a good one. I like that one. Like when you get benefits from headshots, like I'm, I'm just, yeah, that's good, good, good. Like... If you do something good and you can get rewarded for it with an item or something, yeah. I fucking love that. Talent changes gear. On the ropes. Nerf. Are they actually saying it? Okay. Weapon damage is increased by 15%, down from 25 while all skills are on cooldown. I mean, yeah, on the ropes was way too strong for way too long. I don't know why it took so long. 15%. I guess that's fine. As long as we see nerfs on that, it's like too early to say. Like... I haven't played the last two months soon, I think, that much, so yeah, my memories are gonna be a little bit rough with like thinking how much this is actually doing. 15% up from 5, this one was horrible before, so 15% it's really nice, because it was just useless. Mad Bomber buff removed attributes requirement, right from grenade radius and now correctly modified, okay. Unstoppable force, killing an enemy grants 1%, down from 2 weapon damage for every, okay. That, that's quite a big uh, nerf. Then again, I don't like when you get the damage from being tanky, so yeah. It can give you little damage though, but it shouldn't be that it's the way to go 
for a damage build, right? Creeping death. Status, status effect spread to the nearest enemy within 25 meters up from 10 meters. Okay, that's good. Nobody really uses this, so upping it like this, it, it's nice. Every 5 seconds from 15. Okay, that makes it pretty good. Trauma. New functionality. PV. Once every 30 seconds, an enemy hit with a headshot is blinded for 5 seconds. So there's no RNG. Every time you hit a headshot, it blinds. Okay, that's good. I like that. No RNG. You do something, you get rewarded. Perfect. That's how it should be. For most skills. Once every 40 seconds, an enemy hit with a headshot is blinded for 2 seconds. Still, look, 40 seconds. It's like looking at it, it's such a long cooldown that I don't think it will be good, right? Centered. Headshot kills grant status effect immunity for 30 seconds. Whoo! That's a good buff. And stuff like this is what I think, like, it should be strong. Like, stuff that doesn't give you damage, I don't mind seeing them strong, right? Dialed in. New functionality while aiming and 15% weapon stability. Fuck that, dude. I like that it was giving accuracy. Like, it was not good, though, but I would like to see it being good with accuracy. Stability it makes it useless for me, but I guess some people are gonna like this. Spotter, 15% from 20. This is still multiplicative. I haven't seen anything else about it, so that's still gonna be strong. But I kind of like that Spotter is strong, though, because it, it makes Pulse usable. Wicked new functionality. Whenever you apply a status effect, gain 15 weapon damage for 20 seconds. That sounds pretty good. Imagine that with, like, yeah. I mean, I was thinking you can power it with... Uh, Creeping death. Oh, that's pretty cool. Like, you will basically have 15% more weapon damage if you play a bit like that, right? Compensated nerf. Compensate. Weapon damage is increased by 10% down from 15 when your critical hit chance is below 20. Hmm. Now correctly removes the buff if critical hit chance is increased when the buff is active. Okay. I don't know, like, compensated is that good though. Doesn't it have a stat requirement as well? Because now it's nerfed, so now we can just use Devastating or pre Precise. It's basically stronger, which I always used, right? Huh. Or Liberate buffed. Deple depleting an enemy armor grants 30. Up from 25 critical hit damage for 15 seconds. Okay, that, that's quite big. New functionality. Enemies you damage take 10% more damage from all sorcerers for 3 seconds. Damn. There's no cooldown on that. Eminent is you damage take 10% more damage from all sources. That's insanely good, dude. Having one guy with that and just shooting like every uh, different NPC in the room. Maybe not right now, but when NPCs are tanky, right? Kneecap, new functionality. Shooting an enemy in the legs applies bleed to them for 10 seconds. This can occur once every 30 seconds. So basically similar to before though, right? Just that it's the legs now instead of only the knee. Blood loss. Swapping weapon grants 15% weapon damage for 5 seconds. The buff is lost for 5 seconds when you swap a weapon while the buff is active. The buff is lost for 5 seconds when you swap a weapon while the buff is active. That's interesting though. I would like to see the talents completely with the stats requirements and stuff because I can't remember like the talents that I don't use. But it could be interesting for like a sniper build too. This was on holster before. But I think the stat requirements are not that good. But anyway, let's keep going. Gunslinger. Swapping to your sidearm within 10 seconds up from 3 of a kill refills the sidearm's mag and grants 30% up from 20 weapon damage. Okay. It's like situational, but at least they are like increasing it, so that's good. Grenades can now be cooked by holding the fire button. Make them explode earlier. Gain plus 15 bonus armor while aiming grenade. Yeah, yeah that's cool. I mean, why not? Gain some armor while you cook it, yeah. I'm not a fan of this though, like... If grenades ever get OP, you can abuse this so cr crazy in PvP, right? Because you can't, there's no... Nothing the other guy can do if you cook it well. But it's definitely like a cool talent though. Surgical, 10% from 5. So tank rich chance, that's good. And trench, headshot from cover with power 15 up from 10. How is this getting buffed though? Really? This... People feel... Holy shit, I don't know about this. Why is Entrench getting buffed? Okay. I mean, I felt like this was super strong with like a MDR, like insane. Now you get 15 instead of 10. 
even with like yeah i mean uh, okay i'm not sure about that one i don't think it needed a buff okay time to look at weapons so naked new functionality whenever your armor is depleted gain 50 percent damage for 20 seconds that's quite huge dude. that's a 20 seconds dude you get the damage holy shit <laughs> yeah that's cool Spread the basket buff aligning body shots adds a stack of bone did it, wait, didn't this be whenever you have zero? Yeah, this was whenever you have zero armor, right? You would gain headshot damage. Okay, breadbasket. Landing body shots adds a stack of bonus plus 50. Up from 5% headshot damage to the next... Wait, landing body shots adds a stack of bonus plus 50. Used to be 5. Headshot damage to the next headshot for 10 seconds. Max stack is free. I, I still don't like shooting body shot and you get headshot damage like it's weird but 50 percent now yeah it's actually real like this gotta be top tier talent now three stacks is 150 headshot damage right even if you hit one body shot if you try to aim for the head like you aim at the neck which you kind of get like some body shots and some headshots yeah that's Oh yeah, that, that's yeah, gonna be really good. Even if you only hit one body shot and a headshot, it's like 50% more on that headshot. Yeah. Boomerang buff. Critical hits have a 50% chance up from 20% chance to return a bullet to the mag. If a bullet is returned to the mag, the next shot has a plus 50 increased damage. Okay, now this talent is actually really good. Like this was one of the talents in the beginning that I thought sounded so cool. But it was never good actually. It was never as good as you thought. And now with this increasement though, it should actually be really good. 50% chance to return the bullet to mag. Damn. It's a lot of uh, new strong talents. That's for sure. It's gonna change up a lot. Close and personal. Killing a target within 7 meters grants 50% weapon damage for 10 seconds. Yeah, this was something that I said before. That 5 seconds is just too little. I would have liked them to keep maybe 5 seconds though. But uh, you should be able to refresh it. You can't refresh this one. But yeah, it's good to see it getting buffed at least. Nearsight. Receive a plus 80 up from 35% stability at the cost of 30% critical strike range. And minus 30 optimal range. So I mean, if you need stability, then you use this one. 80% stability. And you only lose... 30% of the critical strike range, right? And 30% optimal range. You lose some range, but you get no recoil, basically. Finisher. Swapping from this weapon within 10 seconds up from 3 seconds of killing an enemy grants plus 30 critical hit chance and plus 30 critical hit damage for 15. So you can combine, you can combine this with the other one, right? Swapping from this weapon within 10 seconds up from 3 seconds. So now the window is way, way higher, right? Before it was just way too little, 3 seconds. 10 seconds? Okay, that gives you time. It gives you 30 crit chance and 30 critical hit damage for 15 seconds. So you could combine that with... Uh, I mean, you could combi combine it with Gunslinger, right? Swapping weapon, you could combine it with uh, Bloodlust too. So yeah, there, there's some combos you can do there. Frenzy. For every 10 bullets in the mag cap, gain plus 3... So it would used to be 2, so not that huge of a buff. Rate of fire and 3% up from 2 for 5 seconds. I feel like the duration is what's like is, is the problem with this one, right? I Th think that's something rather look at. Killer. Killing an enemy with critical hit grants plus 50. Critical hit damage for 15 seconds. So a lot of the talents that used to be so, so short, they are getting increased to quite high value. So... The, it's gonna be a lot of different talents you can go for now. Which should be the case, right? There's definitely gonna be talents that are gonna be the best though. Lucky shot. Mag size capacity is increased by 20. Missed shots from cover have a 100% chance to return to the mag. That, that's actually insane. Which means you can just spam for headshots and if you manage to miss, you get the bullet back. Which means you have a 100% headshot rate, right? <laughs> uh, that's interesting. But you have to be in cover though. Outsider. After killing an enemy, gain 100% optimal range plus 100 critical range and 100 accuracy hmm like 100 optimal range is not that interesting 100 gold critical range is not that interesting but the 100 accuracy that's pretty interesting 
Unwavering. Swapping to this weapon grants plus 200 weapon handling for 5 seconds. Kills refresh this buff. Okay, so they state that it refreshes. I wish like more of the stuff would just refresh. Swapping away disables this buff from all weapons for 5 seconds. 200 weapon handling. That's crazy. Deals 30% weapon damage to bleeding enemies after 3 kills. Applies bleed to the next enemy you hit. That's nice. If you're going for like a bleed build. Seems to be quite some options now. ILS. Deal 30 weapon damage to blinded enemies after 3 kills. Okay, same. Okay, they, all, they did that to all of these, right? So making CC. So making... Not, not CC builds. What is the name? Status, status effect uh, depending builds, I guess. More viable for sure. Maybe you can make some builds out of that for sure. Overwhelm buff. Suppressing an enemy grants plus 10 weapon damage for 10 seconds. Max stack is 5. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of suppress. It's just annoying. So, yeah. So, I definitely need a buff. That's for sure, at least. Adjustment for, for range. Removed attributes requirement. Okay. That's pretty nice. Can always use ranger. Even though I think there's a lot of other options right now. With all these buffs and nerfs. Reformation. Headshot kills increase skill repair and healing by 150% for 25 seconds. 150 for like that. That's actually insane. Like just thinking for like a healing build. 150%. Rifleman. Buff. Stacks are no longer removed on missed shots and body shots. Okay, that's good. Because Rifleman was really hard to use actually. But this is going to make it usable. And probably one of the better talents for damage. Premeditated nerf. Weapon damage is increased for every shell loaded to a maximum of 40%. Up from 35. If all shells are reloaded, the weapon damage is increased by additional 10. Down from 50. Okay, this, this was just such a stupid talent. I would actually like to see this being reworked. But at least they are kind of nerfing it a lot. So, so that's good. But it just works way too well with the double barrel shotguns right you can have builds that we're not even expecting into it and one shot people oh no 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 but that's good pummel this is a talent that i hated early on let's see if they fixed it so two body shot kills instead of three refills the mag size and grants 50 weapon damage for 10 seconds so yeah they still did not do it why if, if you see that this talent needs a buff why don't you just do consecutive kills instead of body shot kills? Like, if you get a kill with a headshot, it doesn't count to this. Like, it's so dumb, dude. Like, seriously, just change it to consecutive kills. Jesus. Vindictive. Added functionality. Killing an enemy with a status effect applied grants all group members within 15 meters plus 20 critical hit chance and 20 critical hit damage. Oh, yeah, you only got crit chance before. So now you get 20 crit hit damage and it's 20 seconds instead of 10. Definitely a good uh, item for group. I hope this works for full raid squads. Because stuff like this, it would be fun if it would be use of, like, useful for raids, right? Measured. Modify functionality. The top of the... <laughs> Measured is such a meme though. The top half of the mag have 20 rate of fire and minus 15 weapon damage. The bottom half mag has 20 rate of fire plus 30 total weapon damage. Wait, what, what did they even change, dude? Modified. I actually have to pay attention. They didn't say what they changed top half of the mag have 20 rate of fire and minus 15 weapon damage the bottom half of the mag has minus 20 rate of fire and 30 total damage i have no clue what they changed to this so i assume that is still trash it just looks like it was before just that they changed some numbers here and i can't remember the numbers steady handed buff landing a shot adds a stack of bonus three percent up from two percent weapon handling Max stack is 10. So this is getting buff actually. I did use this a bit back with LMGs. Max stack is 10. Down from 15. Hmm. At max stack, each shot landed has a 5% chance to consume the weapon handling and refill the mag. So this is this is just making it easier to refill the mag because it's 10 stacks instead of 15. Fast hands buff. Critical hits adds a stack of 15% up from 3. Reload speed bonus. Max stack is 10, down from 20. Yeah, 20 stacks, that's crazy. But yeah, so now you get 150. <laughs> 150 reload speed? What? How, dude, how insane is that gonna be? That's cool though. Like, I think reload stuff that doesn't give you damage should, should be strong. But maybe this is too strong? Too weak? I don't think too weak though, but it could be too strong maybe. 
Okay, that's basically all of that. UI changes. The order of mod slots have been rearranged on several gear items. I feel like this was the most interesting thing though. Like we're gonna skim through the rest pretty quick here because video length, like a pair, like it just UI changes. We don't really care. Okay, this one, this one, <laughs> 12 loadout slots. So that's perfect. I was pretty mad about uh, having too low loadout slots. So yeah, 12, that's good. We'd like to see 20 though, but 12, uh, good start, good start. Gotta start somewhere. Damage RPM and skill power is now visible and can be compared to the main inventory screen. Good. A lot of like quality fixes. Bug fixes. I don't think I want to go through this. I'm just trying to skim through it quick here. Yeah. It's a lot of bug fixes. Audio fixes as well. Modding. Like just a lot. And I, I can assure you this is not all bug fixes they've done. There's definitely more. Fix an issue that could cause the protect reload and protect deploy. Talent to randomly grant, yeah. That was bugged before, so that's fixed. This is interesting though. Cause the five or six scare set bonus on Ace of Ace bait. Ace of Eights to break when it's activated while the player was under. I know Ace and Eights was really bugged, so hopefully they fixed that. Doesn't say anything about it working with six man though. Or to the full raid group, eight. A lot of fixes. Darks and PP, let's just check it out one quick. Doesn't really seem to be. Fixing cover issues, that's good though. Hope that's like head glitch stuff that they fixed, but I don't think that's the case. I guess most people are not aware, I guess. But yeah, that's basically all of the stuff. I'm actually really surprised and happy with all of the the changes though like the fact that they are redoing and like so much balance into all the talents like that that's a good that's a good good start you know and yeah definitely looking at it some stuff is gonna be too strong for sure but gotta start somewhere right and i mean there there is a pit test now to, to test this stuff but yeah if something is too strong you just fix it for the next patch right hopefully they don't take too long to fix it but overall, it's some good stuff, and this is not everything, of course, for the new update. There will be more stuff on the way, and it's not, and it's not 100% set in stone either, right? But yeah, that's gonna make this video, and I'm pretty sure this video is so long, I'm probably gonna try to edit this a bit shorter though, but yeah. And if you're wondering if I will play the PTS, yes, that's, that's the plan. Not today though, but probably one day during this week, for sure, test it out. And yeah, I'm gonna be interesting to to play Title Update 6 when it comes out. Like right now, there's nothing to do, but Title Update 6 changes a lot of the meta. Maybe PP can be fun again with the Dark Zone changes, right? Making it more populated and all that. And hopefully there's more to the PvP as well coming, which we will see tomorrow on State of the Game. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And see you guys in the next one.